Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. The next item of business is a statement by Michael Matheson on impact of policing on communities during the miners' strike. The Cabinet, Minister, Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be no interventions and interruptions. I call on Michael Matheson uh, to begin. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, 10 minutes, please. Thank you, President Officer. I'm pleased to come to Parliament to address members about the Government's plans to initiate an independent review of the impact of policing on affected communities in Scotland during the miners' strike. Last September, in answer to an oral parliamentary question, I advised that the Scottish Government was addressing various issues around proposals for a review of policing of the minor strike of 1984-85. I committed to announcing my decision in due course. I know this statement has been keenly awaited by interested parties, not least by individuals and communities from our mining heartlands and I thank them for their patience. I'm also grateful for their role in getting to this point today. It's generally understood that the 1980s represented an extremely turbulent and difficult time for many communities throughout Scotland, mining communities in particular. I know from the conversations I've had that Although more than three decades have passed since the main miners' dispute, the scars from experience still run deep. In some areas of the country most heavily impacted, the sense of having been hurt and wronged remains corrosive and alienating. That is true of many who were caught up in the dispute and its aftermath. Those employed, in the mining industry at the time, of course, but also wider families and communities. The miners' strike has, was also a difficult period for the police, with many individual officers finding themselves in extremely challenging situations, and police and community relations coming under unprecedented strain. Whilst things have moved on considerably in the decades which have followed, the question of how best to learn from this period remains. How best can we aid understanding, reconciliation and inclusion? One approach is the let sleeping dogs lie approach. In other words, to do nothing. This is, some might say, the approach adopted by various governments in the past. But if the hope had been that the sense of injustice and division would heal naturally without intervention, then it seems to have been misplaced. Ignoring the issue doesn't make it go away. So I understand the great disappointment that arose in October 2016, when the then Home Secretary Amber Rudd announced that the UK government was ruling out an inquiry into events at the Orgrave coking plant in South Yorkshire. The Battle of Orgrave, as it became known, one of the most notorious flashpoints in the minor strike. I made clear at the time that I thought that was the wrong decision. Wrong, not least, because it seemed clear that key elements in the mix which needed to be understood were the attitudes and perhaps actions of the then UK government. An alternative to that do-nothing approach put to me strongly by campaigners is to honestly address some of the key issues through a focused investigation specifically into the policing of the minor strike in Scotland. When I met with campaigners, including Neil Finlay, whose commitment to this matter I readily acknowledge, I agreed to explore this option as sympathetically as possible within the constraints placed on ministers in this parliament by the devolution settlement. A key issue is what kind of review is possible and crucially, what value would it add given where we are today? It is important to recognize, for example, that there is already effective provision available for anyone who considers that they have experienced a miscarriage of justice 
in terms of criminal conviction. The Scottish criminal justice system has established procedures to deal with alleged miscarriages of justice. And as I made clear to the campaigners, the Scottish Criminal Cases Review Commission is the appropriate route if anyone believes they have suffered in this particular way. However, wrongful conviction is just one form of injustice. The question is, how might we better address wider but equally distressing forms? This has come home to me in my dealings with campaigners. I've been struck, as I said, by the continuing deep feeling and sense of injustice, a sense that our fellow citizens feel they have been misrepresented and ill-treated, that they wish their side of the story to be told and that any appropriate lessons are learnt to avoid unnecessary division and distress in the future. I've given this careful consideration. In particular, I've had to look closely at a significant number of technical challenges. I want to ensure that anything we do is robust, proportionate and fair. I've concluded that doing nothing is not an option. While what I can do is limited by the powers devolved to Scottish ministers, I'm determined that the Scottish Government should do what it can to do right by those affected by the dispute. Consequently, I can announce that John Scott QC has agreed to undertake an independent review of this matter. His remit will be to investigate and report on the impact of policing on affected communities in Scotland during the period of the minor strike from March 1984 to March 1985. I can announce too that John Scott will be assisted by an advisory panel comprising of our former colleague, Dennis Canavan, former Assistant Chief Constable, Kate Thompson, and Professor Jim Murdoch of Glasgow University. This grouping will bring real authority and a balanced insight into the issues raised. Their work, which will begin with some preparatory activities over the summer, will include a review of the publicly available files held at the National Records of Scotland and the National Archives in London. It will also include gathering evidence from those directly affected by or having knowledge of the dispute and report the findings. To allow effective engagement and consideration of the issues, I've asked for an interim report in early 2019. A final report setting out lessons learnt and making recommendations for any other actions required will follow by June 2019 and be made publicly available. I hope, presiding officer, that my decision to establish this review underlines the importance that the Scottish Government attaches to this issue and our understanding that there are questions about the impact on communities that remain to be answered. I'm pleased to say that Nicky Wilson, President of the National Union of Mine Workers, gave his wholehearted backing to this approach when I spoke to him this morning. He said, and I quote, following the Justice Secretary's earlier meeting with the NUM, I'm really, I really welcome the leadership being demonstrated by the Scottish Government on this issue. Rather than a potentially costly and drawn out public inquiry, we will have a time limited and focused independent review, which I hope will really get to the heart of the injustice experienced by mining communities at that time. We have good relations with the police and no wish to pursue a vendetta, but it's high time that what mining communities endured during the strike is properly understood. So, an officer, going forward, my expectation is that the process and outcome of this review will help to bring a degree of closure, crucially of a positive kind, through openness, disclosure and understanding. In keeping with the truth and reconciliation approach suggested by the Scottish Police Federation. 
I, it does not, of course, remove what I see as an obligation on the UK government to fully explore the extent of any political interference by the UK government at that time. I've therefore written to the new Home Secretary to renew my call, first made in November 2016, for the current UK government to institute an inquiry. Although my earlier plea was rejected, I remain of the view that it would be better for all concerned if in a spirit of tra tra transparency, justice and reconciliation, the UK government would now follow our example. Through this independent review, Scotland will certainly lead the way in ensuring that the experiences of those affected by the dispute in the 1980s are properly recognised. Some of our communities have been blighted by the shadow of that time for too long. I hope that members will join me in both encouraging those affected, by, affected, uh, affected to engage with the review and to in welcoming the work of John Scott and the advisory panel as an opportunity to acknowledge those difficult times and truly learn from them. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Um, the Cabinet Secretary will now take places, uh, questions on the issues raised in the statement. I intend to allow up to about 20 minutes for questions, after which we really must move on, unfortunately, to the next item of business. Time is very tight, so can I ask members who do wish to ask questions to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call, first of all, Liam Kerr. One minute, 30 seconds, please, Mr Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of his statement. Where there are questions and where issues remain unresolved in the minds of the public and those who were directly involved in the dispute and those affected by the dispute, it is always important that we seek to understand and look to learn the lessons of the past. Given the importance of this inquiry, this panel, people will be very interested in the composition of the advisory panel. So can the Cabinet Secretary clearly detail what the selection criteria were for those members? And furthermore, I note the Cabinet Secretary's point that the miners' strike was also a difficult period for police, with many individual officers finding themselves in challenging situations. So what guarantees can the Cabinet Secretary offer to police officers, both past and present, who may be concerned about the results of this review? Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, the panel which has been uh, put together for the purposes of uh, this independent review is to ensure that we have uh, sufficient uh, legal expertise, uh, so the expertise that Jim Murdoch brings as a professor of uh, law at Glasgow University will help to support the group in the work that they're undertaking. Uh, Kate Thompson, giving her policing expertise, and also Dennis Canavan, given his long-standing connection uh, with mining communities across Scotland. John Scott, of course, has uh, an outstanding uh, recognition uh, for his ability around uh, criminal matters, but also in the human rights field. On that basis, I think the advisory panel working with John Scott give us the uh, right balance. As I mentioned in my statement, and as uh, Nicky Wilson uh, stated himself, uh, this is not a vendetta against the police, and the Scottish Police Federation believe that a truth and reconciliation approach would be helpful in addressing these underlying uh, concerns. But the independent review which I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sanctioning uh, to go ahead uh, will help to address some of those long-standing issues of mistrust uh, which continue to exist. But I hope the member today will recognise the role the UK government have in addressing this matter. Today, I've written to the Home Secretary saying that the UK government need to do more on this matter. And I would ask the member today to show his support for that and to write to his party colleagues in the UK government asking them to do exactly the same thing. Thank you. I call now Neil Finlay, please, Mr Finlay. Thanks, President Officer. And can I thank the Justice Secretary, not for, just for the sight of his statement, but for the content of his statement. I don't often uh, praise ministers of this government, today I am, but today I am delighted to make an exception. 33 years after the strike, following three decades of campaigning by a great many, many people, far better than me, uh, we now have an independent review. The first step, I hope, to a full UK-wide public inquiry. And today, today's announcement is significant in the fight 
for justice for so many individuals, families and communities across the former Scottish coalfield. And I hope this reverberates all the way to number 10 Downing Street. The release of the Cabinet papers under the 30-year rule and the fallout from the Hillsborough inquiry exposed how the police and judiciary acted under the centralised political direction of the then Thatcher government and were instructed to defeat the strike no matter the cost. We know that Scottish miners suffered disproportionately from the impact of this policing strategy. Many lost not just their jobs, but their relationship, their homes, their mental and physical health. Many were blacklisted and others went to their graves, victims of a miscarriage of justice. I hope this review avoids the uh, errors of the MESH review. I hope it's thorough and inclusive. I hope it provides the opportunity for those, for those to come forward and give evidence with their legal advisers so we can finally shine a light on this enormously important period in our country's uh, recent history. And I hope we leave the door open to a full public inquiry if that is indeed deemed necessary. Finally, can I thank all of those people, some no longer with us, who have given me unstinting support in pursuing this campaign in Parliament and for those in the gallery today, thank you. And more importantly, let me put on the record my admiration and thanks for those who over 30 years have never given up the fight for truth and justice. This is their victory. And now after 33 years, let the truth be told. Thank you. Before I, before I call you, Cabinet Secretary, can I say to uh, those in the gallery, and I do understand why you're applauding, but we don't permit applauding in the public area in Parliament, but I do understand it. Gently said to you. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, can I uh, uh, welcome Neil Finlay's uh, comments to these on this matter and can also uh, recognise again his long-standing commitment and interest in this issue in pursuing uh, this particular uh, uh, matter uh, over an extended period of time. Sign officer, in uh, Mr Finlay's comments, he uh, uh, wanted to ensure that this independent review will be thorough and inclusive and I can assure him uh, that is the intention behind uh, the purposes of establishing uh, this independent review and individuals who have been appointed to it as well are individuals of uh, significant integrity and who will ensure uh, that the matter is pursued in an open and transparent fashion. I've also discussed with John Scott the approach that potentially could be taken in order to make sure that communities, the affected communities, have an opportunity to participate in that process. And some of the early work that they will be taking forward is engaging with relevant stakeholders, including with those politicians who have an interest in this matter, to look at how they can frame their work in a way that ensures that those who were affected and have been affected over many years by this particular dispute have an opportunity to engage in the process that they undertake. So I hope, uh, and I was very encouraged by the discussion I had with Nikki Wilson uh, earlier on today in their commitment to supporting uh, the work of the uh, of the group in reviewing uh, this uh, matter. So I can assure the member it will be thorough and it will be inclusive. And I hope uh, that it will help to draw some closure to some of these long-standing issues that have been left for far, far too long. Thank you. I have 10 members wishing to ask questions and only 14 minutes when we must move on to the next item. So please try to make your questions crisp. Fulton McGregor, followed by Maurice Corey. Thank you, President Officer. And I'll remind the Chamber quickly on the PLO to the Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that my constituency, Coke Bridge and Chryson, has a rich mining heritage and many of these communities remain active, eh, for example, in, in Moody'sbourne, home of the Auchengeek mining disaster. So will the Cabinet Secretary reiterate that assurance to these communities and the nation as a whole that this will be a full and transparent inquiry? Cabinet Secretary. Sign officer, it will be, it will be open and transparent and uh, members, as I've mentioned, have been appointed specifically to help to enable that. That's the reason why I've also appointed the advisory panel to work alongside uh, John Scott on these issues. And if it uh, assists members in uh, considering some of the work that John Scott has already uh, conducted on behalf of the Scottish Government, uh, one in particular was the area of work he undertook on the issue of stop and search, which was a very inclusive approach to allowing people to express their views and to uh, express any concerns uh, around that matter. And I certainly expect that approach to be taken forward uh, by the independent inquiry he's now taking forward. Thank you, Maurice Corrie, followed by Claire Hockey. Thank you, Deputy Prime Officer. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary in his statement spoke of significant technical challenges. Uh, would he be able to outline to this chamber what those challenges are? Cabinet Secretary. Ensuring that they're within uh, devolved competences. Claire Hockey, followed by Daniel Johnson. 
Can the Cabinet Secretary explain why the review he has announced will not look at wider ranging issues? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, there has obviously been a number of uh, significant disputes over um, uh, many years um, across uh, Scotland and across the whole of the UK. However, the nature of the uh, minor dispute was one which affected communities right across the country uh, and it affected them in a very, very significant way. And on the basis of the, given the nature and the scale of the uh, minor dispute and the impact that it had on these communities, uh, mining communities, uh, in my view, it merits this independent uh, inquiry to be taken forward. Thank you, Daniel Johnson, followed by John Finney. Thank you. Uh, can I commend the Minister not just for this initiative but for also his considered tone that he took in his statement? I think it's very welcome indeed. Will the independent review have the power to compel witnesses and will those affecting their families have access to legal support should they wish to give evidence? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, they will not be in a position where they can compel uh, witnesses because it's not been undertaken as a public inquiry as such. However, um, I've got no doubt that if the uh, independent review is taken forward appropriately, uh, willing parties will be prepared to engage in that process. It's an opportunity to bring individuals together in order to explore and consider these matters. Uh, and given the uh, members who have been appointed to the advisory panel, given their backgrounds and also uh, the background of John Scott, I've got no doubt that those who have an interest in this issue will engage with it and engage in it in a way which is purposeful and will help to support the work that they're trying to take forward as part of their investigation. John Finney, followed by Claire Adams. Okay, thank you, President Officer. I'm very grateful to the Cabinet Secretary. It's, it really is very good news. And the Cabinet Secretary alluded to a previous report done by Mr Scott. And I recall that Mr Scott described the, the police as be, should be at the forefront of defending citizens' rights. Dur during the period of this... Uh, um, this review will look at Cabinet Secretary, the Special Demonstration Squad was active. Um, will you write, Cabinet Secretary, will you write to the Home Secretary seeking cooperation from the Pitchford Inquiry to help the review discover the extent of undercover policing from south of the border and using your own words, um, the corrosive and alienating impact that may have had in aggravating what was already a difficult situation for mining communities? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign off, so the member will be uh, aware of my view in terms of uh, the issues relating to the Pitchford Inquiry and the reasons that I believe that that should be extended to uh, Scotland and also to uh, Northern Ireland, given the nature of the SDS's work as part of the Metropolitan uh, Police. Um, in relation to the specific points he's made uh, regarding uh, the review which will be undertaken by John Scott and the advisory group, um, once I have the, uh, uh, the, the six monthly report from them, and if there are issues there that demonstrate there's a requirement for greater cooperation from the UK government, um, or if they're flagged up to me at an earlier stage, then I will certainly make representation to the UK government to request that. Thank you. Claire Adamson, followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, presiding officer. Um, I was a teenager when my community was affected by these issues, and I vividly remember the government manufactured social tension between miners, steel workers, and the police. So does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that it's essential we learn from what has happened to ensure that these failures are never replicated ever again and that no trade union faces an attack from government that we experienced at that time? Cabinet Secretary. Epstein officer, I was at school at the time when this dispute took place and I can still remember the scenes from the minor strike as well uh, during the course of that period. And although I was brought up in the... Uh, uh, the, the south of Glasgow, um, it was uh, the minor strike even reached into our community uh, by, uh, by those who had families and friends who were affected by and trucks, etc., and everything that were passing through our local area during the course of that dispute going to, uh, going to uh, Ravenscraig. Uh, I completely agree with the member. Um, uh, there are uh, real issues of concern around the way in which uh, uh, UK government uh, acted in such a way uh, in which to undermine trade unions at that particular point and the impact that then had on uh, local communities. And I hope through the instigation of this independent review uh, we will get a greater understanding of that and uh, provide greater transparency to that uh, from the course of work which will be taken forward over the course of the year and how it impacted on those mining communities right across Scotland. Liam McCarter, followed by Ben McPherson. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy President Officer. Can I pay tribute too to Neil Finlay for his efforts on this and thank uh, the Cabinet Secretary for his statement. Very much welcome it. And, and indeed, the, the chairing by John Scott, I think, is good news. Should offer some reassurance uh, to both those in the mining communities, but also the police, that given his work on uh, not just uh, on uh, stop and search, but on biometrics, that he will be very thorough, uh, but also even-handed. But in relation to uh, the reference he makes to procedures uh, for dealing with alleged uh, miscarriages of justice, 
this? Could he advise the Chamber if he's aware of any such cases being brought forward uh, or steps being taken to, to build such a case? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, sign officer, I'm not aware of any individual cases. However, there is a legal mechanism there for anyone who does believe that that's the case. Um, uh, subject to legal advice that they receive from their own uh, uh, legal agent, they can uh, then uh, lodge a, a request with the Scottish Criminal Cases Review Commission if they believe that they have a case uh, which uh, relates to a miscarriage of justice. So the legal mechanism is there, uh, but I would always advise uh, any individual who is considering something um, of that nature to take legal advice first of all before they make such an application uh, so that they uh, make as best use of the mechanisms for making an application as possible. Ben McPherson, followed by Joanne Lamont. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary explain why the Independent Re Review will not look at political interference? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, one of the challenges which I mentioned, the technical challenges, is the devolved nature of um, responsibilities in this area and our uh, ability in this area is limited because of the nature of the UK government's uh, involvement and the fact that the Scottish Parliament was not established at the time of uh, the dispute. Therefore, the policing of it was the responsibility of the UK uh, government and that therefore limits the scope of which uh, we would be able to uh, look at these matters. Even, President Officer, if we were to establish a, a public inquiry under, the, uh, under specific legislation, we would be extremely curtailed in what we could look at, uh, given the nature of reserved and devolved matters. But I, uh, uh, notwithstanding that, um, I've got absolutely no doubt the uh, independent review which uh, we're establishing uh, will be very thorough and detailed in considering these matters uh, and will clearly listen to evidence which they hear uh, from those communities which were affected on how they believe it had an impact on them uh, and how, uh, how uh, uh, aspects of political interference uh, may have happened at that particular point. Joanne Lamont, followed by Rona Mackay. Thank you. In welcoming this uh, statement, I reflect on the way in which even those of us who were very supportive of minors were led to believe at that time there was widespread c criminality in the mining communities, absolute shocking use of the power of the state. And can I maybe in particular flag up to the Minister, given the recent history of independent reviews like that into the use of MESH, which failed completely to secure the confidence of victims, what steps has the Cabinet Secretary taken to secure this review's independence? Will he confirm that the review has the authority to go wherever the evidence takes it? And would he reflect that it would be helpful if he would confirm that he's not absolutely ruling out a full public inquiry, if necessary, in the future when the review reports? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, I've just made mention of the reasons around the public inquiry in Scotland would have very limited, if any, uh, real effect that would be different from what's been conducted through the independent uh, review. However, we will wait to see what the outcome from, is from this particular independent uh, review in the first place. I think uh, Joanne Lamont uh, makes a good point around the injustices which are felt by uh, those in the communities uh, that were affected by uh, the dispute. Uh, and of course, I can confirm that the uh, review uh, acting independently will be able to follow the line of evidence that they see as being appropriate and to engage with communities and individuals in a way that they see is appropriate uh, for the purpose of carrying out their uh, inquiry over the coming months. Rona Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Just to follow on from that point, um, John Scott has said he's keen to listen to individuals and communities directly affected. Can the Cabinet Secretary give us assurance that there will be a wide variety of ways for people who have been affected by the dispute to have their views heard? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, in the discussions I had, uh, Presiding Officer, with John Scott uh, in approaching him to take on this particular role, um, he gave me an assurance that he would seek to find a range of different ways in which to engage with uh, communities, whether that be through individual meetings or whether it be through public meetings or uh, other types of community-based uh, approaches. He is keen to ensure uh, that as many people who are interested in expressing their views uh, and telling them their story, uh, that they ensure that they facilitate that uh, as part of the process of taking evidence on this matter. Uh, and I've got no doubt that engagement with a range of different stakeholders from the NUM and to those here in this chamber will help to shape the approach that they take in ensuring that they allow as many people as possible to express their view uh, and to tell their story uh, over the course of the coming months when they're taking evidence in different parts of the country. Thank you. Uh, that concludes questions to the Minister. Can I thank all members for the way they asked their questions as we managed to get every question in. I'm going to do a very slight pause as we move on to the next item of business.